Uh, hello and welcome to what I hope will be uh, a new little mini series here on the Retro Power channel. Um, one thing we hear quite a lot in the comments is people wanting to know more about the behind the scenes stuff. Um, and I think by that they mean uh, more about the running of the business rather than the physical work on the cars. Uh, and I was trying to think of a way of sort of defining a video series that would cover that. And we've obviously got the autofocus series out there already, which is just us trying to share some of the knowledge we've gained over the years about what we do on the, physically on the cars, on the, on the projects we're working on. Um, and that made me think that can be quite well defined as the techniques we use. Um, and I figured the other side of it is the tools that we use. Um, so we're going to sort of focus in on the techniques we use with the autofocus series and then this tool time series we're going to focus in more on the tools that we use. Now obviously when I say tools you think immediately probably welders, hammers, spray guns, grinders, whatever it may be. But actually software is something that's uh, quite an important tool to us and something that really is a behind the scenes part that we've never really shown any detail on. So I wanted to show you one of the software packages we use called Global Workshop. Um, now this is something that we've actually been helping with the development of over the last year. Um, essentially being a, a sort of guinea pig and feeding back and tweaking and changing along, you know, helping um, Rowan, who's the, the founder of Global Workshop, um, to tailor the package to work really well in this environment. And I know he's also working with people in the marine and aviation world in a similar fashion, a couple of selected businesses who are feeding back and trialing it. And we've actually got to the point now where we've rolled it out fully. All the guys here are using it. We're using it uh, to the, the maximum of its capacity. Um, so let's talk a bit about what it is. So the key thing it addresses for us is the customer interaction um, element of the build. And something I hear actually from the vast majority of our customers is that the sort of experience, the journey of the build is almost as exciting as the end product at the end of it. And trying to maximize that experience is something we're very aware of. Um, and obviously that's largely in the form of media, so videos and photos, um, as well as you know, written discussions. Um, historically, we've used a combination of things. We've used Dropbox, which is just a file hosting service for um, uploading photos and videos as, as we go through the project. Uh, and generally I've just used WhatsApp. I use WhatsApp to chat to the majority of the customers and I tended to do a sort of video walk round um, when there was a, a reasonable section of progress made on the project uh, and just send it over via WhatsApp. But there are problems with both those things. WhatsApp is quite bad in terms of things getting lost in conversation because you're having general conversation with the customer. Uh, the videos, the sort of photos and videos that you've sent periodically get lost in this massive thread of, of conversation. And then I personally have this, the problem where after a while my phone gets full and one of the first things I'll do is go into my media and go right WhatsApp videos, they can go get rid of the lot and then when you go back through the conversational threads, you just end up with gaps in the conversation as if those videos and photos never happened. Um, and I, my customers have the same problem where you just get to the point where there's so much on your phone, you end up losing those things. Um, and there's also the problem that Dropbox, uh, WhatsApp crushes down the bit rate a lot. So it really compresses video files to the point where they're, they're nowhere near the definition they originally were. Um, and then Dropbox, in terms of file hosting, although it, you know, it obviously hosts files perfectly well, you can put high resolution videos on there, but it's just not, a, it's very clunky. It's, it's just folders with files in. Um, if your customer isn't a Dropbox member, then they just have the link that you sent for the folder. They've got to work out where that link was. They've got to find it. They've got to click it every time. Um, or they can sign up. To, the, to have an account and then there's the issue of whether they sync all the files to their computer or not and it's just not very streamlined in terms of a, a sort of step-by-step -step timeline of that build project. Um, and Global, Global Workshop addresses that absolutely perfectly because it's aimed specifically at big build projects in the automotive, marine and, and aerospace industries. Um, 
it's it's just perfectly set up so every time we've got a photo or video update to do we post it to that customer's account um, and on either the desktop or the app on the phone it appears as a new timeline addition in their build progress and then the whole the whole build series is added in a series of uh, timeline updates which you can then click on to open up the full contents of that update and, you know usually there being numerous pictures or videos within each update so it's just a very slick way of displaying uh, the, the progress of the build in chronological order um, and then there are a few other clever little features within it i'm going to start by showing you some of those now so what I'm going to show you first is the app, which is available on uh, iPhone and Android. Um, and what we see as the company when we open up the app is all of the projects that are on the go here at the moment. Um, now, every member of staff here has this app on their phone or tablet, um, and they are encouraged when they're carrying out work to photograph or video in a sort of step-by-step -step fashion, uh, and then post those as an update on the app. Um, that's quite a nice way actually of the, the guys taking kind of ownership and having a, a sort of a sense of pride in what they're doing uh, over and above what they normally get by being able to personally post the photos and see them sent over to the customer. So they do that every time uh, they're on with something interesting, take some photos, stick it on here, press uh, update. Now what that does is put it into effectively a holding area where I can go through, review those updates, and then I can change the uh, visibility over to be visible by the customer as well as just by us. Um, and then what the customer sees, once those updates have gone up, uh, we go into the page, the timeline for that project, and that is what the customer sees. So it's a series of um, updates in chronological order, which are dated, and then when you click the update, you see the video or series of photos that have been uploaded. Um, from our point of view, there's a couple of interesting features. Um, the little eye symbol um, turns green when the customer's viewed that update, so we can see that they've viewed it. Um, and there's also a comments uh, section, and we can see if they've posted a comment, because that'll turn green also, so the customer can post comments about that update. Uh, another thing which is quite cool is the guest section. So the customer can issue guest passes to their build. Um, they enter the, their friend's email, whoever they want to invite as a guest. Uh, and they get a notification to accept that invite. Um, and then whenever we post an update to the customer's project, all of the guest passes also receive a notification. Um, and it's quite cool for us to see, we can't see who's been invited, but we can see how many guest passes have been issued um, and how many times those guests have viewed the updates. Uh, and it's quite exciting to see the customers sort of excited enough about the builds that um, they're actually issuing guest passes, showing it off to their mates, and we can see their friends have viewed the updates, which is all, you know, it all adds to the buzz of the, uh, of the build. Um, so that's the basics. It's, it's about um, uploading media in a fashion that creates a nice chronological timeline view that the customer can enjoy during the build and then also view afterwards um, and they can show their friends. Um, another cool feature which relates to the media updates is the smart code system. Now this essentially allows us to generate a QR code based on a specific update um, and then we can print that label out and apply it to something in the real world. Um, so it has a huge amount of uses, but a great example is if we're disassembling something, uh, a complicated component, and we want a record of how it all went, uh, was all, all went together, or even if we're reassembling something, we can take all the, all the photographs of the process of disassembly or reassembly, uh, create that update, then generate a smart code from that and apply that label to, let's say, the, the container that all the parts are in, or the finished item if we were rebuilding it. Uh, and then the next time somebody comes to disassemble or reassemble that component, all they've got to do is scan the code and then it immediately brings up the reference photos on their device. Um, another really good example is on dry build, when we're fully building the car essentially while it's bare metal. We then strip it all back apart again, everything gets surface finished, painted, the shell gets painted, and it can be quite a few months later by the time the final build is going on. Um, by which time it might be a different member of staff doing the final build to the dry build. Uh, and in any case, it's long enough ago that they might well have forgotten how it all went together. 
Um, so another, another great one there, you know, let's say we've got a HVAC system behind the dash, it's very tight, all the ductwork has to go in a certain way, the plumbing has to go in a certain way for it all to fit. Um, take a series of photos, even an explanation, an explanatory video, um, then create a smart code from that uh, update, stick it to the HVAC unit, everything gets pulled apart, months down the line when it's all going back together again, somebody's, oh, how does this go? Scan the, scan the code, up, come, up comes essentially step-by-step -step instructions, so very, very useful feature. So that's pretty much covered the main fundamental of the media side of Global Workshop, um, the photo and video updates for the customer, um, and the smart code system. Um, what I'll go into now is the other um, facilities that it provides us with. Um, there's one that's going to be forthcoming, which we're doing using a different method at the moment, and that is the time sheeting, the way that staff record their time and the way that then gets transferred over to the customer's invoices. Um, that one's one in progress with Global Workshop, but uh, the other key facility on it, which we, are, we have now fully implemented here um, and really enjoying using it, is the uh, inventory management system. Um, now, historically, again, we how everything that we keep in stock here that isn't specifically ordered in for a particular project, um, whether that be hoses, hose fittings, nuts, bolts, abrasives, all of that sort of thing, we keep a stock of those things here, so we're not just constantly having to order things you know which we could just have on the shelf. Um, we have those all on our um, accounting system, so we can issue those items to a customer's invoice pretty easily. But historically, recording what was actually being used um, was the key, the key sort of part of the puzzle. And it was literally just paper clipboards. So we'd have a paper clipboard with all the, all the fastener selection, a paper clipboard with the hoses, one over with the abrasive storage area, and every time somebody comes in, they uh, just write down what the project was, how many they'd taken, what the item was, and then periodically um, Kelly in the office would go out and grab the clipboards, enter all that information in, um, and assign all of those parts to a project. And although our accountancy software had a basic way of uh, managing stock, it wasn't really detailed enough. You could you could just you could see how many items are in in stock, but it didn't really have any kind of way of storing exact details about that part, where to order it from, whether it was on order, that sort of thing. Um, so something we've been working on again over the last year with Rowan at Global Workshop is really perfecting that inventory system, and that's that's working extremely well for us now. So. Every item we have in inventory is now in the Global Workshop inventory list. Um, all of those items have the uh, supplier information, the contact details for them. You can put links on there. So in most cases, we've actually got a link to the web page um, where we can reorder that item from. Uh, we've got the current stock levels on there. Uh, and then we set in for each item a reorder amount, um, so basically a threshold where if we go under that amount, it flags it as needing reordering, uh, and also a reorder quantity in terms of how much we should reorder of that item to restock. Um, and then all of those items have got uh, a QR code label on the bin they're stored in, so the guys can simply open up the project again on their phone when they want to sign something out, uh, open up the project that they're signing the parts out to, click the parts section, click scan, scan the QR code on the bin, put in how many they're signing out and hit update. And that not only adds those parts to that customer's project uh, and adds them to a list of items to be invoiced, um, but it also obviously takes that out of the stock quantity so that uh, eventually when the stock, stock gets to its threshold, it flags um, that we need to reorder. And there's again a section in the desktop version, which Kelly uses in the office, um, which basically has a list of things she needs to reorder. So she just has the list of things to reorder. Next to each of those things, it has the contact deals, details for the company, it has the part number, it has links to the web page. So it's dead straightforward to just go in, reorder all of those. She then checks each one as having been ordered. We can then see them on a list of um, items that are on order, and then when they arrive, they're just checked off as having been delivered and added into stock. Uh, so it's actually 
a reasonably simple system, but it's we've looked into doing this quite a lot of times before, and we've just never found a system that had the right level of complexity. They were either way too basic, or way too complicated, or and or expensive. Um, and this, because it's tailored again specifically for people in this type of industry, uh, it just has everything that we need it to have, but none of the, n nothing over the top. Um, and it, it's just a very good tool in terms of not only saving time um, on the data entry side of things, but also making sure that everything is accounted for because it's very easy as, as this type of business expands to find that you've got tons of things you've bought to use on the cars that aren't specifically entered into inventory and they just end up essentially being you know, given away for free. You know, you might get a roll of tape here and, uh, you know, a bit of heat shrink there. And those things on their own don't add up to much. But when we're buying rolls of Tessa duct tape that's 20 quid a roll, um, and you multiply that by all of the things that we have around the workshop that just get used in little bits and bobs, you know, self-tapping screws, cable ties, etc., etc., etc. They don't seem significant on their own. But if you add everything together, it's a huge amount. So we're we're kind of upping to the point where everything is accounted for, um, even down to masking tape, uh, you know, as I say, self-tapping screws, um, cable ties, it's worth scanning those out. Even if sometimes they're just being used in the workshop, um, the, from a stock control side of things, we, we even scan them out as well, so we've got a project for the retro power workshop, um, and the guys will just, if they just wanna, you know, maybe they're doing a bit of wiring work somewhere in the workshop, on the workshop, not on a car, and they'll just scan it out to the workshop. So at least the stock amount still stays the same. Um, and it just avoids that situation where you think, right, I'm just gonna crack on with this job, just gonna grab myself a, a, a couple of cable ties to do that. Oh, there aren't any, okay. Back to the office, right, let's order some cable ties. It just eliminates that and it, everything runs so much more smoothly when all of the sort of day-to-day -day inventory items are in stock at all times. So, you know, for us, it's a, an incredibly valuable tool there's a missing link in there at the moment, which is the the connection between Global Workshop and our accounting software, which will automatically um, add the items that need invoicing onto the invoices. But that will be coming, and that's one of the next um, areas that I know Rowan wants to work on with this software. So um, that will be coming, and then when we include the timesheeting in there as well, it means we've literally got a completely comprehensive package then, where all the time management's on here, project management will be on here, uh, stock controls on here, the media uploads are on here, and that all, all of the uh, other things talk to our accountancy software and generate the invoices. So that's the end goal with it, but certainly at the moment it's uh, exceptionally useful for us. Um, the timing of this video going out is certainly intentional to some degree in that Rowan is coming over to the UK um, this weekend I believe um, and we'll be over here for a few weeks so he's attempting to do a bit of a tour of UK shops a because he's a complete petrol head um, and b obviously trying to drum up um, business uh, people who could also benefit from this package so if you are interested in uh, even just learning a bit more about it um, do go on to the Global Workshop website and speak to Rowan drop him an email drop him a message and uh, he will no doubt get back to you so I hope you enjoyed this first episode uh, and we're going to do many more about the tools, whether they be physical tools or software packages that we use and show a bit more behind the scenes at RetroPower. Uh, we will be back on Sunday for the usual uncut and I'll see you then.